My name's Sir Brandle. Um, I'm a painter uh, in my studio in Waltham at the moment. I live in Weston. My wife and I and family moved to Weston in 1964. And uh, I enjoy coming to my studio uh, pretty much every day, except Sunday. And I have uh, projects, uh, often uh, portrait commissions. I like doing uh, landscape paintings uh, in nature. And uh, later I will show uh, a typical process, uh, working from a watercolor sketch done on location. I always liked drawing as a child. As most children, uh, whether crayons or chalks, uh, and I discovered that um, I was able to uh, produce, working from a photograph, a pretty good likeness at a fairly early age. So I think it was natural for me to uh, gravitate toward doing portraits. It's something that I've always loved. And uh, at the museum school, I was very fortunate because uh, for two of the years that I was there, um, we had a wonderful portrait artist, Gardner Cox, who uh, spent most of his life uh, doing portraits of oh, very well-known people like Bobby Kennedy and Henry Kissinger and uh, a lot of prominent people. Well, I'm beginning an oil painting that is based on a watercolor painting. This is a place called the Breezeway in East Gloucester where the wind from the harbor comes through regular, regularly. It's a very cool, inviting place to work. So I'll, this was done probably within an hour and I'm going to start with the sky and I've learned that there's a particular combination of colors that produce something very close to the sky color that I like very much. And I'll cover a pretty large area because I can work over it. I can bring the, the tree, the foliage back over the blue. But right now I just want to establish the sky color and the sky would get somewhat lighter as it comes down and I'll have some clouds in the foreground. But those are the decisions that I can make as I work along. So this is a very thinly painted, and I'll probably keep it very thinly painted throughout. This little gazebo in East Gloucester, I, I like the shape of it, and I wanted to make sure that was in the scene. There's an island here, it's called Ten Pound Island. It's uh, one of the features of Gloucester Harbor. And the uh, painter, Winslow Homer, spent a summer there painting, painting the area in and around Gloucester. All right, we're looking at a portrait, or a painting done from a black and white photo. Uh, the subject is uh, Serge Kuzovitsky, who was the uh, music director in Boston for 25 years. I started to uh, collect uh, his recordings with a friend of mine who also uh, liked his work. And when we were in the military stationed in New York City, we spent uh, any free time that uh, we had collecting um, albums that we could find in used record shops, things like that. So I decided, uh, probably in 1962 or three, uh, to do a portrait because uh, the intensity that comes across in his recordings, I wanted to try to capture that. And I don't usually work like this because it's sort of a semi-expressionistic approach. So I wanted to get some motion into the painting. And I think it's a good likeness because it's a very small uh, black and white photo I use for reference. It's one of my favorite paintings.
Okay, this is a painting of uh, granddaughter Angela when she was pretty young, as you can see, uh, doing some outdoor sand drawing uh, down in uh, Cape Cod. And I like the uh, painting, it's very simple, very simply done, and I'm just happy uh, with the way it turned out. I sent a bunch of photos into American Artist, and uh, one of their editors came out and uh, interviewed me some years ago. And they chose this for their cover, which I was very happy about, and so was Angela, as a matter of fact. And the color of the water, I think, I'll add a little more green. There are always boats in this harbor, and I think it's appropriate to have a few in here. I'll just put in some, uh, some beach. I'm just scrubbing on color right now. Actually, there are a lot of shadows uh, in the foreground, but this is all a combination of sand and some uh, grass growth. But for now, I'm going to paint it a light color because I want the shadows to go over it. That's uh, part two. A friend of mine, uh, one of the Gloucester painters that I admire a lot, has a philosophy of pretty much putting in all the darks that he sees in a scene right away. It helps him compose all the rest of the picture. There are so many ways of making a picture and there is no single best way. It's uh, every painter has to decide how to approach it and uh, experience provides the uh, provides the direction. Okay, this is a painting I did um, oh probably 20, 25 years ago. I was the publicity photographer for the uh, Boston Lyric Opera for five years. And so I got to photograph uh, their productions. And one of the operas that I photographed was a, uh, a French opera. The composer was uh, Poulenc, and it was a one-person, one-act opera called The Human Voice. And the subject of the opera was this lady on the telephone, continually, talking to her boyfriend, who is pictured throughout her apartment. And I, I'm afraid that the uh, conversation was not successful. I guess they broke up on the phone. But it was a short opera and the background, uh, the set, was this modern uh, sort of abstract shapes except for the furniture in the, in the room. And so I thought it would be fun. It wasn't a commission, I just enjoyed the, uh, the whole deal. So I did that painting based on one of the photos that I took. Anna Gabrielli is the soprano, and I don't know if she's still performing. I think maybe she is, but um, yeah, this was, was done quite a few years ago. Dark brown, maybe a little alizarin crimson, maybe not quite that much. But at this stage, there are many variables and 
things can change. I don't want that to be a straight line, even though it probably is in nature. I just want to add some variety to it. People put their boats and kayaks in this little area. And uh, when they want to take a boat out or a kayak out for the uh, afternoon or whatever, they just come and get it and into the water. Some people bring them on their, uh, on their trucks and take them home again, but there are many of them that are just left here for the use of the owner, I guess, of course. The paints in my palette are uh, pretty basic. There's warm colors over on uh, the left side of the palette, and I put uh, white in the center, or I might put uh, two or three areas of white because I don't want uh, a, a cool color to uh, influence uh, a warm color, unless it's, it's purpose for doing it. Uh, and the earth colors uh, generally dry more quickly, the browns and ochres and uh, whites, uh, depending on what type of white, um, uh, can stay uh, moist for quite a while. Uh, some of the blues and greens uh, will uh, dry more slowly. And of course, the thicker the paint, the longer it takes uh, whatever color to, uh, to dry out. I want to get some browns in here now and get the, uh, the big shapes of the trees. And the first stage, I want to cover the whole canvas with some kind of paint, uh, far from a finished state, just the beginning. Oh, see, the fact that I sprayed very lightly some fixative over the charcoal keeps it from uh, smudging. My palette is uh, a glass palette, very easy to clean. I just take a, uh, you know, a blade and at the end of a day, scrape off the, uh, the paint, except for the big colors that I laid down, and they stay uh, moist long enough to work several days before they harden and have to be discarded. Kind of a warm, warm color. It, uh, this doesn't have to be perfectly accurate. Just put an indication down and see what I want to do with it. I like light hitting different areas. You see the foliage over here is getting a lot more light from the sky, or the sun directly probably. And then there'll probably be some lighter uh, colors of the foliage in different places showing that the sun is coming through branches here and there. And there's a lot of variation in the, uh, the foreground. The, there'll be some greens and ochres. Uh, it's sort of an instinct uh, you can remember from pictures that you feel come, have come out well in the past. Uh, it helps you uh, get started in the direction that you want to go and uh, very rarely do I totally discard a, uh, a painting, but it does happen once for some reason it just, just things just don't work. This uh, originally was a, a tripod for an old portrait camera, a five by seven portrait camera. And I bought it from an elderly gentleman a long time ago. And I did use it in conjunction with uh, his camera. But I discovered that it makes for me an ideal support for my uh, palette. Because if I want it higher, I just crank it up. For some reason, I want to work at this level. Uh, it's easy to do, easy to change. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty ancient. 
Okay, well, this painting uh, was done from a color photo that I took uh, my wife bird watching. She was something of a serious bird watcher. And wherever we went, whether it was Cape Cod or Maine or Vermont or other places, uh, she was very interested in, in looking at birds. And I was also interested in photographing them if I could get close enough because very difficult. I find anyway to uh, photograph birds. And the uh, location is in Wellfleet uh, near Great Island. Uh, it's very realistic uh, and very simply painted. A lot of, uh, I guess you could say, abstract shapes in there. Okay, I mentioned uh, earlier that uh, I'm very fond of doing charcoal. Uh, Often it can be done uh, very quickly, so you get a very fresh impression of the subject. One of the projects that my wife and I decided to uh, undertake, and I can't give you a date, was to photograph the children at the, uh, I don't know if I should mention the name of the school, I guess the Red Barn School in Weston. We thought that if we photograph the children uh, at play and in their classes and then have it at exhibit, uh, the parents might be interested in the photographs and they could split the proceeds with the uh, Red Barn School. Well, they thought it was a good idea and so we spent several days uh, photographing the children. And this is the result of one of the one of the pictures. I have no idea who the child is. I don't uh, remember whether or not the uh, parents liked the image or not. But there was something about the contrasts of uh, you know, this rather gnarled tree uh, this child was playing on and the way she sort of wrapped around it and has this wistful uh, expression. Uh, and I thought that the drawing turned out quite well, and uh, I thought it would be worth uh, framing. And it's been in uh, several exhibits. And one of my favorite uh, black and white drawings. Yeah, well, the museum school was um, a wonderful experience. I didn't really like high school, and uh, going to the museum school on the advice of my high school art teacher, actually, was uh, a real joy. And I stayed there for five years. And while I was uh, a fourth year student, um, I met uh, my future wife, Edie Ann, and she was a, a wonderful artist. And uh, we were married actually in 1959, and we had uh, two daughters and I see them uh, on a regular basis. I have a granddaughter living in, uh, in Oregon who's just ready to start a career in uh, speech pathology. But Edie's art, um, she excelled in doing um, paintings and drawings of animals. And uh, her career really uh, centered on doing pet portraits. And I keep samples here to show people, uh, even though she's gone. And um, occasionally someone will see the samples and, and want uh, a painting of a pet. And I do my best, but I uh, certainly am not as talented as she was. And after she passed on, um, I did a, uh, a family exhibit uh, at the Western Library. And so I produced new paintings and used a lot of uh, previous paintings that I had done. But I particularly like this one. And as I remember, uh, she was sitting at this table. And at the time I took the photo, I'm pretty sure it's a setup shot because the way she was sitting was very natural. And so I took a black and white uh, photo. And I've always liked it, so I thought, well, why not? Uh, do an oil painting. And I've been pleased with the way it came out. Uh, it's done pretty realistically, uh, which is something that I wanted to do. I wanted to get a good likeness and uh, 
Uh, the painting in the background is one, an early painting I did of our children when they were quite young, when we were living in Brighton. So it's um, a lot of nostalgia connected with it, and uh, uh, a lot of people have remarked about the, uh, the gesture and the pose. So uh, I feel it's uh, quite successful. Uh, we work in watercolor at the Council on Aging, and uh, it's been a good experience. Uh, one of the members, uh, Lee Queen, she, um, you know, we've known her for many years, and uh, she would ask me uh, to join the group. And finally I did, about a year and a half ago. And it's been a good experience. We, uh, fortunate enough to have uh, a model pose for, from time to time, but mostly uh, we work uh, uh, from a still life material. Uh, something that I haven't really done very much of. Occasionally I'll do a still life painting, but uh, it's a real challenge, I think, uh, putting together a uh, design uh, based on oh, you know, glassware or flowers or fruit, whatever uh, we decide to use. So that's been a very good experience. Council on Aging in Weston is a wonderful uh, organization. All right. Um, well, now I'm going to do some uh, work on the sailboats. Uh, this is a, a little harbor that is always uh, full of boats of different types, but I've decided to put in three. And uh, so I need to do some work with verticals. And then uh, I decided to try a, a sort of an orangey red sail here because there, there are some boats up in the North Shore that have that type of sail. And it's, We'll see how it looks. This gives uh, some steadiness to what I do, and uh, it's a device that painters have used for centuries, really. And we'll use some verticals in the masts. And I can change the color of the, of the tone of the mass if they look too dark or if they need to look darker. It's kind of bright, I'm gonna to have to tone this down. So I lighten up the color. I'll just add some dark under the hull. I've pretty much done the things that I thought would uh, finish it up. Still not sure about the sail. It may be something that I'll have to look at, uh, you know, tomorrow or next week and, and make a decision about either to change the color or, or to leave it alone. Hey, Hello, Mr. Tony. Randall. <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? Fine, thank you. Nice to see you. I haven't seen you for ages. ages. A long time. <laughs> oh, beautiful Brought painting. Something new. Uh, very nice painting, Mr. Randall. Well, thank you very much. Where is this place? Well, I... Um, I went to uh, East Gloucester, and uh, this place is called the Tunnel. I did a watercolor sketch some time ago, probably a few years ago, oh, and I liked the scene, and I liked the uh, 
the atmosphere, so I thought I'd it's beautiful. do a painting and very realistic. I love it. Oh, thank you. I'd like to be there right now. Wow, very, very nice. It's a great place, and this time of year is beautiful. Perfect. I love it. I think I have a perfect spot for this painting wow. in the store. Sounds good. Should we hang it up in the wall? Why not? Great. Well, let me go. That's great. Let me. I think I have one spectacular area right here. All right. Next to the other paintings, which are all beautiful. Ah, very good. I think it looks very nice. Yeah, I think it fits. Uh, Look at the light, it's amazing. It fits amazing that collection. Light. Very, very nice. It's beautiful. Well, great. I really I should be appreciate very... the exposure. Oh, yeah, you're a, one of the best <laughs> artists in, around, I should say. Well, I, I appreciate I, you bringing the paintings to the store. It's always an honor and a pleasure. Well, thanks. It's a pleasure coming. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. So uh, that's what I've been, one of the things I've been working on over the last uh, few weeks, all of this. Well, it took maybe a couple of days altogether. I love it. I think it's great. I think you have a perfect spot.